Hey everyone, I'm Bite Size Genius. Checkpoints are one of the biggest factors which determine your art style in stable diffusion, and there are so many to choose from, it can be difficult to know where to start. So why don't I show you 8 realistic stable diffusion checkpoints with examples, so you can hopefully choose one you like and begin making some fantastic pieces of artwork. I've upscaled all of my personal examples to 920 by 1376 on the seed of 100 and I've used the negative prompts of the checkpoints provided via their own examples but I'm using my own prompts to generate a unique image for something fresh. But like the video and give it to me bite sized. So the first checkpoint I'll start with is a personal favourite of mine called Absolute Reality developed by Lycon. This checkpoint is quick to generate, easy to use and produces fantastic hyper-realistic results even with very simple prompts and prompting techniques. All examples provided on the Laura's page are using realistically rendered images so you may have difficulties aiming for something more stylized but I've mocked up my own examples so you can see it in action and you can instantly see the beautiful detail from this image. Everything from the eyes to the mouth, the sweat, the reflections and even the strands of hair which lack that artificial look have all been captured in a very hyper-realistic way. The armour looks a bit more like an image skillfully blended with some photoshop work, but the face is pretty much perfect and the body can always get an in-paint knowing that the more trickier aspects are done. And looking at our landscape piece, we have this well-lit laboratory which doesn't have the sharpness I would like but captures so many elements from the light coming through the windows to the shadow of the leaves on the wooden cabinet and the way the light bounces onto surfaces within the shadows. I'm sure you could upscale this image even further for a perfect and sharp render but this is a beautiful result and the concept itself looks like something that could be practically used by an actual scientist. The next checkpoint we have is Luriel, I think developed by Kamin Duru and this one can do both realistic and stylized pieces as seen through the examples on their webpage with short prompt requirements that don't need to be complex for a good result. And in this example image I produce, we have far less depth of field compared to other examples which helps the realism pop even further and it's not being hidden by a lower level of detail. Everything looks right from the eyes to the sweat and even the armour which lacks the imperfections like scratches and naturally occurring dirt but does the job of establishing that base which can be worked on further. The light is less intense on this piece and this is emphasised further by the dark background which helps the lights around the neck and head stand out. Moving on to our environment piece, there's this lack of sharpness in the image and everything somewhat blends into itself in a muddy sort of way. I like the chairs and desks that are being added, giving the scene a somewhat eco-modernist look. There's a huge amount of repetition and symmetry throughout the scene, which draws your eyes to the bottom right, leading to what could be an exit, but perhaps a window, I'm not entirely sure. But it's a fair image, probably suited to characters, which the checkpoint actually recommends. Now Edge of Realism is an interesting checkpoint developed by Odder's Level 4 Plates because they don't show any environment pieces in their examples and instead opt for these hyper-realistic pieces which are vibrant in their colour a look more westernised in their art style. The prompts used in the examples look fairly complex so perhaps this isn't the best for beginners and the negative prompts look custom made but didn't contain any embeddings or lauras so you're probably good to swap those out for ones you prefer. And taking it out for a spin, we get a result that really does justice to the term edge of realism because this image looks like a mix between a hyper-realistic woman and a doll you might expect to see chasing you through a dark forest because you're late on paying your parking ticket. There's something uncanny that I can't put my finger on and I think it's in those inexpressive eyes and posture with screams do not activate me. But despite the weirdness, we have a brilliant result that captures the essential elements of a person despite the plastic look in LED lights. But on the environment piece, I was quite shocked because it seems to nearly nail the hyper-realism and sharpness I've been looking for in the desk and chairs, which are nicely detailed, although I'm not sure what's going on with the ceiling and the trees look like two-dimensional images. Ultimately, it's a decent checkpoint, which will probably do wonders if you work for a toy company but may struggle in other areas. Our next checkpoint is Deliberate, developed by XPUCT, and this aims to achieve a semi-realistic art style as well as being capable of doing painted images reminiscent of a canvas painting in a hyper-realistic style. The downside of this checkpoint is that it requires some more advanced knowledge of prompting and detailed prompts to get a better result and the prompts can be fairly long. But turning our attention to the organic piece, 
we have a character that hits that semi-realistic style with the airbrush skin and hair, which lacks the depth you would expect and instead clusters together enough to sell the representation. I haven't got any issue with the anatomy of the design or the lighting, although I've noticed that the sweat miss her skin and we have these scratches on her cheek and I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. On our environment piece, we can see some really saturated colours with the blue sky and the green plants popping from the more desaturated and exposed background. The entire laboratory looks like something a heavily dehydrated Snoop Dogg would want to work in and there's some duplication of assets with the table and the blue dome devices. But it's still a good image that captures the details you would expect and with image to image you can probably randomise the assets a bit more to make it less uniform. We have another checkpoint from Lycon called Dream Shaper and this is another fantastic checkpoint, this time aiming for a semi-realistic art style which can do 2D styles as well as seen through the example images provided on the checkpoints page. Results can be easily achieved and we have only two negative prompts to worry about which simplifies things a lot. If we look at our first image, we can see a fantastic piece that brings a lot of energy in the lighting and design of the body which has far more variety than some of our other example images. The saturation is also higher with the blue eyes glowing and the dark background helps the body pop which is nicely reflecting the light in different ways from the glass to the matte black and metal components. But the background is incredibly bright so hopefully that wouldn't be too much of an issue to reduce but it does create this nice rim around the character regardless. On our environment piece we get this almost angelic look which has fantastic lighting to the point where despite the white you can see the clouds popping against the blue sky and there's this sharpness in the room which helps these little microwave devices and wires appear more clearly. We also have a lot of flowers in the room which gives the place a feeling of overgrowth and abandonment. The duplication isn't that big of a deal because it's less symmetrical and the counters look like something a scientist may actually use to analyse chemicals with the only element missing being a sink. But this looks fantastic and it would be my go-to semi-realistic checkpoint for something reliable without a lot of legwork. Ghost Mix is a semi-realistic checkpoint developed by Ghost and Shell which definitely leans more towards the colourful 2D art styles in a style similar to a concept painting you might see on DeviantArt for use in video games or film production and we also have some realistic looking environment pieces and images of non-organic concepts. It's quite simple to get a nice result as the checkpoint does most of the heavy lifting and the negative prompt covers most of the general anomalies you'd expect to see being dodged. Now if we check our resulting image, we're seeing that two dimensional painted effect coming through alongside the airbrush effect on the skin and the hair clustering together with different shades of light and dark to separate the strokes. The armour design came out really well although it lacks the detail and texture variety and instead captures these large blocky shapes for the exoskeleton. On our environment piece, we have a very confused looking landscape where the floor is either missing or just extremely reflective and we have the greenhouse in what seems to be a conservatory. But the colours and lighting seem to be washed out and it's difficult to define where anything is in this scene so I'm not particularly happy with my result but you might get something better on a different seed. A Zovia photo reel created by Zovia is another vibrant checkpoint which focuses mostly on western characters but can also do environments in a photorealistic manner capturing details quite well with fairly long prompts for a good result as seen in many of the example images. The faces in the examples provided have this similarity across their looks so hopefully this won't bleed over too much into our own images but looking at our portrait first we get this really colourful realistic piece where the blue is just shining through with various strengths alongside the brunette hair and pink tones on the face. We can see our character's face looking similar to the example images in the checkpoint but it's not too distracting I can likely be fixed by referencing some celebrities. There's also a good level of detail on the face with nothing standing out as odd except for these blue splotches which look like paint. The armour is interesting because I've noticed that there's some texture in taking place where we have this acoustic like fabric lining the shoulder area and these tiny dents on the shoulder plate near the lighting alongside bolts welding it all together. Beneath the armpits there's more fabric and it helps to break up the solid surfaces which I really love. Then looking at our landscape piece, I really love how vibrant this is as we have a lot going on in terms of colours from the green plants to the red floor pattern and the blue devices which are perhaps mixing chemicals in this observatory. The light is bright but it doesn't wash out the image completely and I'm sure if we generate this at a higher resolution 
you can capture a bit more sharpness to help draw out those smaller objects and perhaps impact some additional devices into the scene. But I like this result, which does colors quite well, to helping the scene feel a lot more vibrant. Finally, 526 Mix, developed by 526 Christian, is a rather advanced checkpoint which requires some specific settings and a high sampling rate to get good results. But this has the potential to provide some of the most photo accurate results of any checkpoint for realistic renders, as well as being capable of doing other art styles like painted and 2D. Jumping straight into our portrait, I noticed that on both the portrait and landscape, there was this blurriness in the image and this was caused by upscaling the image by 1.8. But looking at both images, we can see that the depth of field is pushing certain parts of the image further back, helping closer areas pop, such as these tubes, which look very dark and gothic alongside the shoulder plates. The face has this contrast that gives it a comic book feel, but captures details like the skin and the anatomy fine. The colours are conflicting with the natural lighting, but I'm sure this can be fixed with a different seed or prompt, so the skin tones are more visible. The body armour is very mechanical and complex looking, but at a closer glance, it's really just a series of tubes and plates, without much structure and hidden in darkness, so it's hard to tell if it practically makes any sense. Then looking at our landscape, we get something that again has symmetry and looks more like a museum than a scientific laboratory. The symmetry really draws your attention to the duplication of assets and some of the textures seem to be confused and appealing into the air. The lighting is fine, but nothing in this image is properly defined, which is a shame, and you would probably have to do some legwork to get this looking correct. But to wrap things up, there's a variety of good checkpoints out there to play with, and this is but a handful, which has hopefully helped you identify ones you might want to try out for your own projects. But before you leave, I want to shout out the supporters over on Patreon and thank everyone for their support. Do drop a like before you leave the building and of course subscribe. This is Bite Size Genius and I hope you enjoyed.